Honorable Rashmati Ji, Honorable the Chief Justice of India, Justice Bhagwati, my dear friend Saman Khushid, distinguished judges of the Supreme Court, distinguished judges of the High Court, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It's indeed a matter of great personal privilege for me to be here this afternoon for more reasons than one. In a way, it's a kind of a journey back into history. When I think of Justice Bhagwati, I invariably think of 1986. This year has been an extraordinary year in my life for more reasons than one, personal and professional and political. Skipping the personal, I'll talk about the political and the professional. It was in 1986 that I got my first important political assignment in the Congress party at the age of 33. It was in 1986, again at the age of 33, the Bhagwati court in its wisdom appointed me as the youngest senior advocate of the Supreme Court. I have been overwhelmed all these years, not only by the vision of Justice Bhagwati, his vision of the Constitution, his inspirational role for young and struggling members of the bar, which has always been a very welcome augury for all of us who started with small but sure steps before his court. But I think his intense humanity and graciousness, the warmth of his personality, the genuineness with which he inspired all of us is something that has been a touching permanence in my life. I have never for a moment failed to remember that watershed year, which I think defines my present. Many years ago, Professor Frank Thakurdas, talking to his students in the Krodimal College, used to define the continuum between the present, past, past, present, and the future. And he would say, the present melts itself, the past melts itself into the present and the present projects itself into the future. I do not know what future holds for me or for any one of us, but I certainly know from my own life experience that the past melts itself into the present. And I think it is my past years at the bar, and most of them, and most momentous of those were before the Bhagwati court, which have defined my present, and I'm sure that is the story of many, many of the young lawyers of the bar. But just as Bhagwati's contribution has been phenomenal in the sense that he has through his writings and through his judgments elaborated and defined for succeeding generations of Indians the concept of a living constitution. The concept of a constitution whose relevance has to be seen in its ability to fashion the present and the future, not only of a country, but of generations to come. I think Article 14, 19, and 21 of our Constitution that remain the soul of India's Constitution, the soul of India's Republic, the Indian Republic, owe a great, great deal to the expositions which Justice Bhagwati brought to bear on the, on the wordings and on the content of these articles of the Constitution. If somebody were to say, what are the three words that would define the progress of civilization? I would say it is hope, it is freedom, and it is dignity. And Justice Bhagwati, through his writings, read into the Constitution hope, freedom, and dignity for all Indians and showed the way for the rest of the world. We remember Lord Denning, but we remember likewise Justice Bhagwati. Justice Bhagwati will forever remain as one of the shining stars, not only of the Indian judicial firmament, 
but would remain as a representative, as an eloquent articulator of the constitutional conscience of India. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. May I now request the Honorable the Chief Justice of India, Shri Altamas Kabir, to release the book, My Tryst with Justice, Memoirs of Justice P. N. Bhagwati, and present the first copy to His Excellency, President of India, Shri Pranam Mukherjee. Thank you, sir. May I now request the Chief Justice Atamas Kabir? The Honorable President of India, Sri Pranam Mukherjee, former Chief Justice, Justice P.N. Bhagwati, Mr. Salman Khurshid, Mr. Vashini Kumar, my brother, and sister judges of the Supreme Court, both present and of the past, who are present here, judges of the Delhi High Court, the Chief Justice of the Delhi High Court, Honorable Ministers, MPs, senior members of the Bar, and others who are here this afternoon. And yes, of course, Governor Bhandari, he is also here. And most of all, Mrs. Prabhadevi Bhagwati. It's indeed a matter of great privilege to have been asked to release this book a book which is not an autobiography of a person who has made himself a legend in the annals of our legal history. And that too, in a place like Rashtrapati Bhavan, and be able to present the first copy of the book to the first citizen of this country. The first citizen who is, after all, the person who is the keeper of the human rights and liberties of, under the constitution of the citizens of this country. Before I congratulate Chief Justice Bhagwati, I think the person who also deserves equal congratulations is his graceful wife. Those who have Rather, I have had an opportunity of seeing up some of the parts of the dummy copy of this excellent book. And Chief Justice Bhagwati has, in fact, himself, to a large extent, acknowledged that power behind the throne that impelled him to write this book. And now you see it in the form of this publication. I have known both of them for some time. My time here in Delhi has been about seven years, eight years running. But my acquaintance with Justice Bhagwati goes beyond that through his judgments. Here was a man, fearless, who believed in a certain philosophy, who believed in something and which he put to practice. Here was a person who gave a new shape and a new vision to the public law of this country. He had the courage and the conviction to take up a matter on the basis of a letter written to him and which ultimately revolutionized the very concept of public law. Taking this letter and converting it into a public interest litigation 
as a writ petition under Article 32 of the Constitution required a lot of courage, required a lot because he was deviating from the normal ordinary course. It takes a lot of courage for a person to do that. And Chief Justice Bhagwati did just that. And look at the result. Look at the impact that it has had on our legal system and in our justice delivery system. In fact, chapter 3 of the book, which as I said, I had a chance to look through. Uh, if those who are familiar with Mills and Boone series, I mean the girls would be. Uh, it reads something out of it, how, uh, something like out of Mills and Boone. How he met Prabhupati Bhavi, how the first in time he took her out, where they went. It's a romance which comes out in this book. This is the, the, the various, um, let us say, the, the, the facets of this unique personality. Those who will read this book will enjoy reading this book. And uh, all I can say is that I'm blessed and it means a great deal to me to be able to have been able to release this book today and hand over the first copy to the President of India. Incidentally, this afternoon, on Wednesdays, we judges in the Supreme Court have, have, have uh, a common lunch together. And today, I don't know, it was coincidental, just as one of our judges was, is going to retire soon, we decided to give him, I decided to give him a copy of the Constitution, a beautiful edition which has been brought out by Eastern, by Eastern Law House, Book House. I decided just as a matter of thought, why not give each one of our judges a copy of that Constitution, which I did. Many of them asked me, is this trying to teach us what the Constitution is all about? I said, no, sorry, not that. It is just to make ourselves aware that such a thing exists in this country. And I think reading Justice Bhagwati's book, we will be reminded of just that. Thank you.